Father, you are the potter, we are the clay. Have your way in our lives. Father, not our will, but your will be done. We thank you this morning, O Lord, that you are with us. Your word says in the presence of two or more, they gather in your name, there you are in their list. So we acknowledge your presence in this place. We acknowledge, O oh Lord God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would breathe life into our hearts, into our spirits. We pray that you would take the word of God, that you breathe life into it, O oh God. The word of God will take root in our hearts. We, Lord God, will never be the same again. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for the glory of your word. Thank you for the power of your word, the majesty of your word. Father, exalt your word above your name. And we thank you this morning. O oh Lord of God, your word never changes. Thank you that you never change, O oh God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Almighty God, I plead the blood of Jesus upon each and every person gathering this place. I plead the blood of Jesus upon everybody that is watching us right now. Everybody that is listening right now. I plead the blood of Jesus, O oh Lord God, upon them. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that the sin will be healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. To be made whole, the broken be made whole this morning in Jesus' name. Lord God, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor. We give you all the worship, Lord God. Father, I yield myself to the authority of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you have your way in me and through me this morning to declare the word of God to God's people. In Jesus' blessed name, all the people of God say, Amen.
book of the New Testament, the eighth chapter. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning about the will of God. Hallelujah. God's will. Come on, somebody say, God's will, not my will. Amen. So I'm going to pick up from verse number one. And the Bible says, When he, speaking of Jesus, had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I want you to highlight that. A leper, now leprosy in biblical times, anybody who had leprosy was considered an outcast. They lived outside the city. And they would have to shout out, say, I'm clean, I'm clean. They were not allowed to associate with anybody. Hallelujah. And here you find people who walk on the other side so as to have no contact with them. But here we have an account, Jesus comes down from the mountain. The great mountain is following him. And watch here. The leper came. The leper didn't stay in his state. He took a step of faith towards Jesus. It was not allowed for him to step out and associate with them because you are unclean. But he takes a step of faith and he comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I am willing, be cleansed. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am delighted. It is my delight. I would love to. You see that? I would love to. I take pleasure in it. It's my pleasure. Be cleansed. Immediately. The leprosy left him. I'm here to tell you this morning that immediately, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, it will leave you because of Jesus. Was in the desert tending his father, his father in law, Jacob. The Bible says he saw the morning, he saw the burning bush. And when he came here, the Lord spoke and he said, Take off your shoes. For this is holy ground. Take off your shoes. Take off the natural. And step into the supernatural. Amen. I'm taking you to the supernatural, Lord Jesus. Amen. And that's what you're saying to this leper. I am willing to come into the supernatural. This is something that is beyond the natural. In other words, there is no explanation, dear leper, for what I'm about to do with you. It's a, it's a miracle that God will do for you. It's something supernatural. We find later on in the same chapter, a centurion comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, my servant is sick. He's lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. That is verse number five. Sorry, verse six. He says, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus, what Jesus said to him, I will come and heal. It's my pleasure to come and heal. I would love to come and heal. I would love to come and do something for you. I would love to come and honor your request. Jesus was never too busy for anybody who came not to. 
You must remember that Jesus is the door. He's the door to the Father. He's the door to heaven. Anybody that comes knocking, he opens. He's always willing. He's always ready to give. He's always ready to touch. He's always ready to restore. He's always ready to make whole. Jesus can make you whole this morning. Hallelujah. He says, I will come and heal you. And we know the dialogue between himself and the centurion. But watch here in verse 13. Jesus says to the centurion, Go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. The centurion's servant was healed that same hour when he spoke to Jesus. When Jesus said, I will come and heal you. And he made a dialogue. And he said, Lord, I am also a man under authority. I say to the servant, go, and he goes. I tell that one, come, and he comes. I am people under authority. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. And Jesus looks at this and he says, such great faith that I not see. I'm telling you this morning, the Son of God is looking for faith this morning. Hallelujah. He's looking for faith this morning. Will the real church arise? Will the real church take a place? Church, we are the body of Jesus. He is the head. Hallelujah. We are his body. The church is not the building that we are in. You are the church of the living God. You are the tabernacle of the most high God. Hallelujah. The amazing thing with Jesus is that when he heals you, he heals you so that you can heal others. He saves you so that you can go save others. He comforts you so that you can comfort others. This is how this thing works in the kingdom. That same faith which got you saved is the same faith which will get you healed. It's the same faith that will get you delivered. It's the same faith that will make you whole. It's the same faith that makes you strong. Come on, somebody. The Bible says God has given to each one of us a measure of faith. Tell somebody, I have a measure. I have a measure. It has been measured to me. It has been given to me. So that I can take that measure. Listen, how does it grow? It grows when I start putting it to work. You see, when God heals you, how does He heal you? By His power. Now that power touches you. That power connects with you. If you take your finger and you place your finger in the wall socket and you turn that power on, you're going to dance to Esco. You're going to dance to Esco. And if somebody else comes to touch you, they're going to join you and dance. So God heals you by His power. Now where's that power now? That power has healed you. That power resides in you. Now that same power you put to work When he saves you, he saves you by his grace, the power of his grace and his word. And that power is resident inside of you. And that's the same power you use now to witness powerfully for you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. He heals you so you can heal others. He restores you so you can restore others. He comforts you so that you can comfort others. Tell somebody God is not stingy. He's not stingy, he's not mingy. You know, many people think, ah, it's only for me, my cat, my dog, and I. No, it's for everybody. Let me show you something. Let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 
number four. It is God's will that you be healed. You saw that? It is God's will. It is not His will that you should suffer. Let me read something to you, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'm going to read from verse 18 to 19. Now all things are of God, who has past tense, reconciled us to himself, reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, what is the ministry of reconciliation? This is the ministry of reconciliation. Is that God was in Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. So he didn't. He didn't look at Jesus, he saw Jesus. He was in Jesus. When Jesus came, he didn't see the sinner. He saw the sinner coming back to his rightful position with God. And I think that's a lesson that we can learn as the body of Christ. Not Jesus. No stone throwing. What did Jesus say? Let him be his own son. Let him be the first to pick up the first stone. When Jesus speaks, every accuser begins to throw their stones away because nobody can stand in his presence without his righteousness. You can only stand before a holy God with the righteousness that comes from a holy God. Our own righteousness is as filthy rags before him. It is by the grace of God that we have been saved. Now God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. Hallelujah. Reconciling the world to himself, that now you belong to him. You are his possession, you are his property. And has watched it, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. You see that? The ministry of reconciliation is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. And because of that, he has given us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation is a Greek word, katalage. Katalage means an exchange. So God in Christ has made an exchange. He is beauty for your ashes. Come on, somebody. He is righteousness for your sin. That's the exchange. It's a divine exchange. Hallelujah. It means an adjustment of difference. If you're prisoners or you are uh, working with uh, accounts, you know that if an, if an account is out of balance, you've got to make an adjustment. If it's stock, then they call it stock adjustment. You, you, you make an adjustment to that account. So our lives are out of balance. And we needed an adjustment. And that adjustment came in the person of Jesus Christ. He set the record straight. The devil thought he had the better hand over you. But Jesus came to set the record straight. Says Satan, you will touch him no more. Satan, they are not yours. Satan, they are mine. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 
Amen. He said, listen, touch their not. For they are mine, they are holy. Katalaje means to restore, to favor. It means that you could have been in a position of disfavor, but because of Jesus, you now have the favor of God working in your life. Let me tell you, brother, let me tell you, sister, one, come and talk to me, somebody, one moment of favor is better than a thousand days of labor. When you meet with favor, favor connects you to your destiny. Favor connects you to what God has destined you to become. Can you say amen, somebody? It is the will of God that you thrive in this life. It is the will of God, come on, that you excel in this life. You have an excellent spirit. The Bible speaks of Daniel. Come and talk to me, somebody. Say that Daniel and his friends, they had an excellent spirit. Somebody say, I have a spirit of excellence. Yes, because you will excel. You're not bringing by your ability. You're not bringing by your wisdom. You're not bringing by the wisdom of man. You are bringing by the ability of God. You are bringing by the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. In John's Gospel, chapter number four, the greatest sermon ever preached and the most effective sermon that was ever preached is found in the Gospel of John chapter number 4. Many people think the greatest sermon is when you have a thousand people. Let me tell you, you can have a thousand people in the auditorium that you preach it to a thousand. But you can still have a thousand that receive nothing. God is not into numbers. God will do big things with something small. Because if he does a big thing with something big, purely people know that it's something big. That's why. But when it's something small, then they question the power. They question the source. Oh, you're not hearing it. You remember Samson? You remember Samson's son? You remember Samson? You remember Samson? What made him question his strength? Because Samson was a skinny man, he was not a bodybuilder. Samson didn't go to Virgin Active. Because if he was a bodybuilder and he was a Virgin Active, they would have known that's why he's strong because he's got muscles. But he was skinny. He was skinny. And they look at this thin guy and say, how can this, I mean, the skinny guy, he goes to the kids. Mm. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. You have an anointing from God. What are those gates that are keeping you out? Samson went to the gates, he grabbed a hold of those gates. The Bible says he shook them. He shook them and they came off the hinges. He left at the gate, put it on his back, and he carried it to the top.
John chapter number 4, verse number 7. The woman of Samaria comes to draw water and Jesus says to her, give me a drink. Give me a drink. Verse 9 says, the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you be a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews are no dealing with Samaritans. You see that? With Jesus, it doesn't matter when you are when you eat with the crowd when you're an outcast. We are all equal. We are all equal. With Jesus, there is no race. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. With Jesus, there is no race. Amen. With Jesus, there is only one race. It's called the body race. We are all equal before you. And this woman says, you have not given the Samaritans, but Jesus answers and says to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Then the woman said to Jesus, Sir, this is typical. Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus says to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst because the water that I shall give him will become in him. It will become in him. A fountain of living water springing up into everlasting life. In other words, what Jesus was telling her, this water that I give, it springs from an unfailing source. It springs from an unfailing source. The source will never fail. The source will never run dry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God hasn't run out of miracles. He hasn't run out of miracles. He hasn't run out of power. Are you hearing me, somebody? I'm speaking to somebody this morning. Yes, 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 yes. It's only just the beginning. It's only just begun. Hallelujah. Hey. Give me something that I can work with to redeem my glory. Amen. Give me something that I can work with. You see that thing that you're holding up? Jesus, give me that thing, I'll work with it. I'll redeem my glory in it. The woman says, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. You see, we look at us, we look at what we have, and we say, But Lord, how can you do this from this one I have? I, Lord, I am only so small, Lord. Lord, I am undeserving. He says you are the most likely candidate. He says you are the most likely candidate. You've got to believe that you are a most likely candidate. You've got to believe that it is his will to heal you. You've got to believe that it is his will to restore you. You've got to believe, you've got to believe, you've got to believe, you've got to believe, you've got to believe. He says, give me a drink. He says, let me take it from you. Let me take it from you and I'll take the anointing of peace. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. I'll make it easy for you, that's what he says. Hallelujah. In John's Gospel, chapter number 11, we find the account of Lazarus. Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary. They cried and said, Lord, if you'd been here earlier, our brother would not have died. Martha first said that she said, my brother would not have died. She says, I have the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. Though he lives, he shall not die. 
He is the resurrection and He is the life. He gives life to the things that are dead. The things that are broken, He makes them whole. The things that are weak, He makes them strong. Hallelujah. The things that are considered fool, uh, foolish to the world, He makes them wise. He reveals His wisdom. Jesus. He says, where are you going to get that living water? Lord, where are you going to get this thing from? He's the source. He doesn't need anything to make something. Oh, Jesus. I must speak to someone this morning. Jesus doesn't need something to make something. He makes something from nothing. He'll take your nothing and he'll make something. He'll take you as a nobody and he'll make you somebody. That's the Jesus name. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. He's the Christ. Hallelujah. He says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And she says, yes, Lord. I believe you are the Christ. The Son of God. She goes and calls Mary. Mary comes with the same thing. Lord, if you've been here a few days earlier, my brother was going to die. What does Jesus say? Take me to the place where you live. He says to you this morning, take me to the place where you lost your joy. Take me to the place where you were made broken, where you lost your completeness. Take me to that place where you were hurt. Take me to that place where you were rejected. Take me to that place. And when they got there, the Bible says everybody was crying. Jesus groaned in his spirit. Shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And there was a no ask him how he's weeping because he loved him so much. They did not know that he wept because of their unbelief. That's why he even prayed to the Father. He says, Father, I know that you always hear me. But for the sake of these that they may hear, this is why I'm doing this. And then he says, take away the stone. Firstly, he tells you, take me to that place. And then he tells you, take away the stone, roll away the stone. The stone, because the stone is what is keeping the real you from truly learning. The stone is what's causing you to stay in the tomb. I'm speaking to some folk this morning. It could be the stone of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness keeps you out. It's a hard heart. He says, remove it. Take away the stone. Take away the unbelief. Take away the doubt. And when they had done that, the Bible says, Jesus called out the Lord. Chapter 11, 
and he Lazarus who had died came out bound hand and foot with great troubles. And his face was left with a cloth. Jesus said to him, Look at him, let him go. Look at him, let him go. I speak to everything that is keeping you bound. I speak to everything that is trying to kept you bound that you cannot see. So you look at him. Amen. 
Tell us the of the kingdom. And I'm a carrier of the kingdom. That's what Jesus says. The kingdom of God comes not by observation. All you say, there it is, or there it is. But the kingdom is within you. What's the kingdom? It's not eating and drinking. It is righteousness. Jesus Christ is the righteousness. It is peace. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. It is joy in God that I can ask in His name and have my joy full. He says, ask that your joy may be full. What are you in need of this morning? He says, I'm willing. Ask that your joy may be full. Ask in my name. Ask that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. If you ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if He hears us, He answers us. We have the petitions. That we have asked. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put a hand on your knees, sister Alicia, who's going to do the offering. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. 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 Isn't it wonderful to be back in the house of God? To be with each other. Amen. 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 The title of my message for the offering today is Being Faithful in Your Season. Amen. 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 So let us just open to the book of Genesis and we're reading uh, from, from the book of okay, the chapter 37 and we're starting at verse 5. Okay, we're all familiar with the story of Joseph, amen? Amen. Amen. So Joseph was the younger son of Jacob and so we are all very familiar with his story. So we're going to just do a recap of uh, the process that he went through in his journey. And we can start by verse 5. So it says, One night Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. He said, Listen to this dream. We were out in the field tying up our bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. So his brothers responded, So you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. So here you have Joseph and the Lord gives Joseph this dream. So this dream shows Joseph that one day he's going to be a person of royalty. One day he's going to rule. He's going to, if you picture, if you picture this, it seems that like Joseph is going to be sitting in a castle. He's going to be ruling and reigning. This was the dream that the Lord gave Joseph. Amen. Amen. But now look what happens. So we can go to verse 23. So. The previous verses, uh, they take us to the story of how Joseph's brothers hated him because of the dreams that he was having. So one day, Joseph was joining his brothers in the field. So it says at verse 23, So when Joseph had arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming towards them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of um, trades like gum, raisin. Uh, so they were taking it down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother? We have to cover up the crime anyway. Instead of hurting him, let us sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he's our brother and our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So what had happened here is that Joseph was now being sold into slavery. Now, I don't know about you, but then if you at that moment and then you, you're thinking, God gave me this dream, one day I'm going to be of royalty. I'm, I'm seeing a vision of I'm going to rule and reign, but now where is this taking me? Now I am in slavery. I'm being sold by my own brothers. I'm being deceived. So you're at this point and then you're thinking like, 
Father, but you gave me this dream, you gave me this vision, but now I'm, I'm being sold to slavery. And Joseph, Joseph's case, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So while Joseph was in the state of slavery, so what had happened is that he was sold um, to an officer of Pharaoh, which this was, we're talking about Potiphar now. So he was sold to this officer. Potiphar was the captain of the palace guard. So if we go on to um, chapter 39. So while Joseph is in slavery, he's working and he's in a foreign land. So it says the Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of the Egyptian master. Says as he served in the home of this Egyptian master. So Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. All his household and affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he had owned. With Joseph there, he didn't need to worry about a thing except for what kind of food to eat. Amen. So we see Joseph here now. He's in this stage where he's working as a slave, but Joseph was faithful in his, in his season. He was in slavery, but he was faithful to this master. He was faithful to Potiphar. And you see that here, Potiphar favored Joseph. In his season, he was finding favor. But what he did, he was faithful in that season. He, was, he, was, he wasn't thinking now about that dream that God gave him that one day he was going to be a ruler, one day he was going to have this caliber of loyalty. He was just in his season, he didn't know if he was going to come, if he was going to get there, but he was in the season and now he was being faithful in the season. Amen. But now we see, okay, things are going good for Joseph, but now what happens? Okay, if we go to verse 7, it says, And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. So she said, Come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her, My master trusts me and everything in his household. No one trusts me with everything more than my master. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Now you can see Joseph here, he didn't reply as if it would be a great sin against his master, but he's thinking, what would God do? What, what is God thinking of him? Sometimes we just think about the people around us, what would they think? And if they're not around, we tend to do the wrong things. Amen. But God is everywhere. He can see what we're doing all the time. Amen. So she kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her. And the story goes on and it says that Joseph fled from her. Amen. So some things we need to flee from. Amen. So you can see that Joseph now, he's tempted. Temptation came. Joseph was popular now. So he had everything. He was he was in charge of everything in Potiphar's household. He could have just snatched those things from Potiphar. But he was faithful in his season. Amen. 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 So Joseph now was wrongfully accused and he was put in prison. If we continue reading in verse 19, it says, Potiphar was furious when he heard about his wife's story about how Joseph had cheated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed his faithful love towards him. Amen. Not before long, 
the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and everything that had happened in the prison. The warden had no wardens because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused him to succeed in everything he did. Now we can see Joseph is put in prison. Even still, he's in a prison and he's serving faithfully in the season that he is in. Amen. 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 And we can see here that uh, Joseph was in prison with some of the king's prisoners. Amen. So remember that dream that God gave Joseph that he's going to be a ruler and he's going to, like if you have this vision, it's some sort of like a castle, he's going to be in royalty. But see, Joseph is in this prison and God is working on the dream that he had given him. You see, he's already in connection with some of the king's people because the king's prisoners were put in that same cell. Amen. Amen. So the story goes on that um, the chief cupbearers uh, of the king were in the same cell as Joseph. And while they were in the same cell as Joseph, they were having dreams that they could not understand. Amen. So Joseph was there and he interpreted those dreams of the king's cupbearers. So after some time, the king's cupbearers, they got released and they were back into the castle. So as we know, the story goes on that Pharaoh had, had also dreams and he needed people to interpret them. So these two cupbearers, they remembered this Joseph who was in the prison, who interpreted their dream. And they uh, told Pharaoh, the, this is what happened and they have they know of a God who can interpret the dream. We all know the story. Amen. So look at how God took uh, Joseph. He took him from slavery to a prison where he would soon meet his uh, king's prisoners and then eventually he would end up in, in actually the king's palace. Because if we continue to read, after some time, Pharaoh gives um, Joseph, he gives him responsibility of everything, almost everything. Amen. Amen. But if we go back to the story of um, how Joseph was taken into slavery, how he ended up in prison, you won't think that um, this is the way he was supposed to uh, achieve this dream. So normally you think, okay, I have this vision, I have this dream. You don't think that, okay, this is how the process is going to be. You think the process will just be smooth. And when it doesn't seem like it's going to be smooth, you forget those dreams. You don't hold on to it. You know what? God has given you, uh, you sometimes seem like, God, but now I'm getting nowhere. God, I'm in a prison now. God, I'm in slavery now. But you've given me this beautiful dream. But God, now, now what? Now I'm in, I'm in slavery. It's like completely opposite to what you've given me. Amen. Amen. So, like Joseph, in every stage he went through, he was faithful. Amen. He didn't question God to say that, God, you've given me this dream now. Now, you're not fulfilling it, God. But, as we see, God was working on Joseph's dream. Wherever he was, you can see that, um, God connected those people because if Joseph stayed where he was, how was he going to how was he going to achieve that dream? How was he going to be in the castle? How was he going to be in Pharaoh's kingdom? So God took him to those places and he connected him through whatever struggle or whatever push that he was going through. He connected him there to achieve that dream. Amen. 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 So. So my message is to be faithful in this season. God has given us dreams, let's hold on to it. It may not seem like He's fulfilling it, we can't let really see it. It may, it may seem like He's taking us through a pit, but He is faithful. So let us be faithful in whatever season that, he, that He's put us in. Amen. So let us not just ask God for money because He's not going to give us money. So let us ask Him for a purpose. So let us also ask Him that God don't give us money, but give us a purpose. Give us skills. Give us knowledge. Give us wisdom to achieve.
achieve whatever dream that he has given us. Amen. Amen. So let us just take our offering in our hands and let us just pray that God give us a desire, then give us a hunger, so that whatever dreams and visions he has given us, that we may hold on to it and that we may be faithful in the season that he is taking us through. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you have given us. We thank you, Almighty God, that you are working, O oh God, on our dreams, on our visions. You are working on our purpose, O oh Father God. Lord, today, O oh God, we pray, O oh Father God, that you may give us a purpose, O oh Father God. May you give us skills, O oh Father God. May you give us knowledge and wisdom, instill in us a desire and a hunger, O oh Father God. To go after what you've given us, O oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh Father God, that you may help us to be faithful, O oh God, in whatever season you've put us, O oh mighty God. It may not seem, O oh Father God, as you are working on our story, O oh Father God, but help us to believe, O oh Father God, that you are working, O oh God, that you are, O oh God, a faithful God. Help us to believe, help us to have faith, O oh Father God. Lord God, these are the things we need, O oh Father God, to hold on to whatever you've given us, to whatever you've put in our hands, O oh Father God. Lord, we thank you, O oh Father God. We trust, O oh Lord, that you are working on us, O oh God. You are working on our story, O oh Father God. Lord God, we will not give up, O oh Father God. We will keep pushing, O oh Father God, until we hit our target, O oh Father God. Yes, O oh mighty God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, and we, are, we say we are appreciative, O oh God, of all you have given us, O oh Father God. We are grateful, O oh mighty God. Let us use whatever you've given us now, O oh Father God. Let us use it, O oh Father God. Let us be grateful, O oh mighty God, for all you've placed in our hands, O oh Father God. Show us, O oh Lord, how to use what you have given us, O oh mighty God. Show us where to go, O oh Father God. Give us ideas, O oh mighty God. Give us wisdom, O oh Father God. Lord God, we thank you, O oh mighty God, that in this season, O oh God, we know that you are faithful, O oh Father God. The economy, O oh Father God, may not be doing so well, O oh Father God, but the economy of the Lord Jesus, O oh Father God, is always good, O oh mighty God. It's never dry, it never runs short, O oh Father God. We will not thirst, O oh Father God, if we drink from your living waters, O oh mighty God. If we eat of your manna, O oh Father God, we will not go hungry. We will not lack anything, O oh Father God, for we are in your kingdom, O oh Father God. We do, not, we do not function, O Lord, by the world's kingdom, O oh Father God, but we will be function from your kingdom, O oh Father God, where the source never runs dry, O oh Father God. It's never lacking, O oh God. It's never empty, O oh Father God. So we tithe, O oh mighty God. We offer, O oh Father God. These seeds, Almighty oh God, we plant them with faith, Almighty oh yes. God. Lord God, and help us to water them with eager, O oh God, with excitement, O oh God. Help us to water them, O oh God, with faith, O oh Lord, and obedience, O oh Father God. Lord God, we thank you, O oh Father God. God, we acknowledge, O oh Father God, that you are our source, O oh God, and everything, O oh God, comes from you, O oh Lord. Father God, the blessings of the Lord, O oh Father God, make the rich, O oh Father God, nothing else, O oh God. If we have your blessing, O oh God, and we have your anointing, O oh God, we shall lack nothing, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh God. We just praise your name, O oh Father God. We lift your name on high, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Father God. May you come and rule in our hearts, O oh God. Rule in our businesses, O oh God. Rule in our workplaces, O oh Father God. Where your presence is, O oh Father God. No other presence, O oh God, will be there, O oh Father God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God. We just bless your name, O oh Father God, and we thank you, O oh Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now we all know the procedure for the offering is we will, as we exit the church, you can place your offering in the offering basket at the exit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Can we stand as we release? The final blessing. You lift up your hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release your blessing and your grace upon your people. I pray that they will 
prosper. I pray that you be well, Lord, that you be well, Lord, with their families, that you be well, Lord God, with their children, that you be well, Lord God, with them in their workplaces, in their places of business. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless you, you bless your people, you multiply, Lord God, you multiply them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I plead your blood upon every home, upon the doorposts and the lintels of every home. In the name of Jesus, your protective covering over them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord of God, I thank you now that they be blessed and they go around, blessed and they come again. And now the Lord bless you, child of God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the blessed communion of the precious Holy Spirit rest and abide with you both now and forevermore in Jesus' blessed name the people of God say Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless you. Have a great day.